In this video, I'm going to be speaking on three critical points that you must know when we're speaking about power of attorney. So stay tuned. Hey guys, welcome to the legal journey. On this channel, we simplify the law and make it easy for you to understand. So if you haven't already, please consider subscribing right below there. Let's get to the topic at hand today, power of attorneys. I would define a power of attorney as a legal document which gives someone the authority to act on your behalf. It's similar to like, you being able to clone yourself. Yeah. Now, if I'm to give you an example, say for instance, there's Jack and Jill who lives in a particular community. They're not married, but they're very good friends. And on one occasion, Jack becomes quite ill. So he needs now to get somebody to act on his behalf to do all of his business transactions and so on business transactions at the bank, he was also going to purchase some property and sell some property uh, to de deal with some um, utility uh, facilities as well, so he has to go to the uh, electricity place, the water, uh, sewage authority place and so on. So what he does is he contacts Jill and asks Jill, are you willing to act on my behalf? In such a case, once Jack then is able to contact an attorney and uh, prepare the relevant documents for the attorney, and it's registered, Jill now becomes what we describe as the lawful attorney and Jack becomes the donor and Jill now then could act on behalf of Jack to do various business transactions. I'm going to tell you further as well that power of attorneys are normally done whenever a person is either disabled, the donor, that is, he is disabled, he can't move around easily and in order for his business to be done, he needs somebody to act on his behalf. So he's disabled, uh, say for example he's un unwell also, not mentally um, incapacitated, but he is physically unable to move around. Because I, I need to make that distinction because I'm going to explain it further down through the video. Stay tuned. Now, I, and the next reason could be that the person, let's say Jack, he has to go abroad and he has some business to be done in your particular country can't be present at the same time while he's abroad to complete that business transaction. So he needs to appoint somebody else to act on his behalf. So that's what I'm saying, it's similar to like if you're cloning yourself. So let's move on to my next point. I hope you, I hope you understand so far. Let's move on. Now I want to speak about three types of power opportunities. The major distinguishing factor is really about the scope or the area of powers that a lawful attorney could exercise. The first one I want to refer to is called the general power of attorney. This is rarely done. Uh, it's where the donor more or less clones himself in its entirety and gives the lawful attorney the authority to deal with his day-to-day -day operations. So you can go to the bank, do whatever withdrawal, whatever deposit, go to various utility uh, places, deal with that with the business there as well, deal with the person's assets, investments as they wish. That is rarely done these days. I don't know why I haven't seen a general uh, power of attorney. So that's that. The other type is a specific or limited power of attorney. This is normally required whenever you're doing bank transactions. Most banking institutions are required where it would state specifically the bank um, uh, account that you're going to be, the lawful attorney is going to be dealing with and what that person could do. If it is that they could withdraw, the amount that they could withdraw, uh, deposit other business transactions as well. So that is a specific uh, power of attorney. So it gives you a specific uh, power and a specific time in which this, this, partic this particular power could be exercised. So for example, let's say Jack, he says that he's going to um, give Jill the power of attorney to go and do a bank transaction. And he says that he only wants Jill to do this transaction, withdraw the sum of $1,000 for three months. And that is an example of a very specific power of attorney. With some more details, you can get the bank information and all of that. And the last one, which uh, as well isn't seen too often, is the conditional uh, power of attorney. Let's say, for example, Jack, he really trusts, trusts uh, Jill. And you know he's going about his business and he says, you know, one day, one day I, I can't say I may just get in an accident and I need somebody to act on my behalf if I'm not able to do my business transactions. So Jack, in such a case, goes by an attorney, a lawyer, and informs, instructs the lawyer to prepare a power of attorney on his behalf on the condition that if he gets into an accident or gets unwell and is unable to do his business transactions, he then wants chill to do his business transaction. Uh, and whatever specific 
uh, assets or so in whatever particular way. Alright? So but that's that's a distinction, those are the distinctions that I need you to remember. I'm going to now speak about a very important part, so pay, pay attention, we're going to move on to that math part. Guys, just for your general knowledge, some donors may appoint more than one lawful attorney. Some persons see that as a check and balance mechanism to ensure that the lawful attorney doesn't abuse his power. Other persons see it as a burden in now placing an extra requirement on a lawful attorney to actually get a task completed. What you should do is speak to your lawyer and your lawyer is going to advise you based on any circumstances which would be better. One lawful attorney, more than one lawful attorney is the case would be. I think it would be prudent for me to also explain the steps involved with actually obtaining a power of attorney, generally. Now, the first step that you need to do is to contact your lawyer. Remember that these videos are not legal advice. They're simply here for educational purposes. Call your lawyer, obtain your independent legal advice. Your lawyer is going to then take your instructions and draft the power of attorney. Now, you will see certain legal terms and phrases in the power of attorney. I don't think that your lawyer is just trying to uh, look good and use these legal terms to sound educated and so no, that's not the case. Those terms have certain legal interpretation that have been developed over the years in the courts. So those phrases will be included in the power of attorney. Once that is completed, the donor, the a witness, as well as the lawyer is going to sign off the document. It's going to then be registered and you're going to obtain an original certified copy. That document is then going to be given to the lawful attorney and the lawful attorney could use that to do whatever business transaction on, he has to do on behalf of the donor. So that's the general steps. Now behind your mind, I'm sure you're asking, is it possible for the lawful attorney to abuse his power? Yes, it's very much possible, very much possible and it happens so often as well. Now, the principle that's important is that the lawful attorney must act in the best interest of the donor. So always have that behind your mind. And sometimes they will act outside of the scope of the power of attorney, or they may act, the lawful attorney may act in their own interest. Let me give you an example. Let's look at Jill. Let's say Jill, it's Christmas time and she needs to get some uh, item for herself, for her loved one, her niece and nephew, her son, all person. And she knows that Jack has a good bit of money because she's a lawful attorney for Jack. So she goes to the bank and withdraws a certain amount of money and then she uses that money to go and buy the gifts, the curtains and the various stuff. But that's not for Jack. As such, she's acting outside of the school and she's acting for her own, her own interest rather than for Jack. And that's illegal according to me. Now I mentioned this earlier as to um, the mental capacity. Whenever a person is doing a power of attorney, normally lawyers will ask for a medical to ensure that the person is of sound mind. Because if a person is not of, a men is of not of the mental capacity or has some mental disorder, so you cannot prepare a power of attorney. You need to prepare. You need to make an application to the High Court under the Mental Health Act to have a relative or whoever the case would be to be deemed as a committee on behalf of the person who is mentally charged. And remember that for sure, that you can't have a power of attorney for a person who is mentally uh, challenged. Remember this also, that the power of attorney comes to an end when a person dies, when the donor dies. There are cases where persons will continue to use the power of attorney saying that it's valid even upon death, but that's illegal. What happens upon death is if there is a will, the, that will becomes effective. And if you didn't see that video, check that video out where I did one on the If the person doesn't have a will, then letters of administration principles will apply. And check that video out as well. I did that with the field master. Very nice video. So check that one out also. So that's the next point I need you guys to remember. What is useful also is remember when you're doing a power of attorney, you're really cloning yourself. That's a good way of describing it. That's the closest, best way I can think about describing it. As such, you want to ensure that you, you have somebody who you trust as your lawful attorney, a good friend, somebody who you know is going to act in your best interest. The power of attorney can be revoked at any time. So once a person, the lawful attorney, is not acting within the scope or is acting against your interest, the donor could always go and revoke the, attorney, the power of attorney. As well as the donor has, he, he doesn't relinquish his powers. 
he could then follow up with various uh, places that the local attorney goes to and ensure that the local attorney is doing as required by the power of attorney. Let me just summarize for you guys what we've talked about today. In this video, we spoke about, we define what the power of attorney is. We also look at the different type of power of attorneys, whether it's specific, general, or conditional. And then we also looked at the area of the scope of power of attorneys, where it could cover various uh, assets of the person. And then we also looked at uh, the powers and how it could be abused accordingly. So guys, those are, that's my summary on this very useful point. I hope that it was of some help. If it was of some help, just leave it in the comments there. As well as if you haven't subscribed, please consider subscribing right below there. Share these videos if you find them to be very useful. Share them with other persons. Guys, take care. Check out my other videos and we will see in the other videos. Take care.